So, episode 9. Okay? So, before we start this, let's connect the past episodes to this current lecture video. Okay? So, in the past episode, we assumed a problem where you wanted to buy your dream car worth 4 million. And since you don't have any money, you decided to borrow. So, the first borrowing option offers you 4 million, but you need to pay an interest worth of 10% per annum. And the second option, which is this one, offers you a loan with these terms. So, the effective rate is still unknown on episode 6 and episode 7. But after episode 8, we have computed 8.8557% as the effective rate. Okay? So, in this episode, we will try to check if the computed rate is the correct effective rate that we are looking for. And that will start after this short intro. So, how do we check if our computed rate is correct? Actually, guys, we have two ways. So, the first one is by using the timeline analysis. So, let's start with that one. So, here is our timeline. So, as per details of the second borrowing option, you need to pay 297500 interest, right? And that's every end of the year for four years. And again, that came from this nominal rate, which is 7%, times the principal of 4,250,000, okay? So, again, it's nominal rate times the principal. It's not the effective rate, okay? So, in addition to that, we already have the initial value of the payable, which is this proceeds, which is this 4 million. So, let's put that here. And... Since we know that this payable will increase as time passes by, let's multiply it with 1 plus the interest rate that we have computed in the previous episode. And we will have times 1.088557. So this 0.088557 is the decimal for the interest. Okay? Now, let's complete this timeline. And if here at the end of the fourth year, this will become zero here, then we can conclude that the effective rate that we have computed is correct. Okay? So, 4 million times 1.088557, and we will get 4,354,228. Minus 297,500, and we will have 4,056,728 times... And again, 1.088557, and we will have 4,415,980. And then another minus 297,500, and we will get 4,118,480. Times 1.088557 again, and we will have 4,483,200. And then minus 297,500. And we will have 4,185,700. And times the final 1.088557. And we will have 4,556,373. Minus 297,500, which is the final interest payment. And minus the 4,250,000, which is the principal payment. And we will have 8,873, which proves that our computed rate is not right. But we can make it right. But before we do that, let's have proof number two. So this proof is just simply getting the present value of the principal and the interest using the rate 8.8557%. And see if the present value of both the principal and interest will sum up to 4 million. Okay? So you're already familiar with the process. So let's start with the principal. So we have 4,250,000 times 1.088557 raised to the power of negative 4. So... The factor, if we calculate this, is 0.712189 and so on. So, 4,250,000 times this factor 
and we will get 3,026,804 as the present value of the principal. Now, let's get the present value of the interest. So we have 297,500, which is again the principal times the nominal interest rate. Okay? So you need to remember that. It's the nominal interest rate and not the effective rate. Okay? So, moving forward, let's multiply this 297,500 with 1 minus 1.088557 raised to the power of negative 4 and divide it by 0 0.088557, of course. And we will get 297,500 times 3.25 and so on. So, we need to simplify this. And we will get the present value of the interest, which is 966,877. So now, let's add the present value of the principal and the interest. And we will get only 3,993,681. And this, once again, proves that 8.8557% is not the rate that we are looking for. So, what will we do next? Next is, we need to redo the process of trial and error and interpolation. But this time, we will use the 8.8557% as one of the results in the trial and error. Okay? So, let's do that. So, we have 8.8557% is equivalent to a present value of 3,993,681. Okay? And then, let's have the x in the third line again with the equivalent um, present value of 4 million. Okay? So, we only need one percentage and one percent value here. Right? So, how do we decide on the second rate that we are going to try? Actually, guys, you remember this. Right? So, based on this, you can also say that the rate and the present value amounts have an inverse relationship. Actually, I've told you that in the past episode, if I'm not mistaken. Meaning, the higher the rate, the lower the present value amounts that you are going to get. And the lower the rate, the higher the present value amounts will result. Okay? Now, let's use that here. So, as you can see, we only have 3,993,681. So, we need the amounts to increase to 4 million, right? So, using what we've learned, then we need to decrease the rate. It's just like that, okay? Again, since the rates and the present value amounts has an inverse relationship, if you wanted to increase the present value amounts, then you need to decrease the rates. And if you want to decrease the present value amounts, then increase the rate of interest. Okay? So, let's try 8.8%. Okay? So, let's start the trial at 8.8%. So, let's have the principal first. So, we have 4,250,000 times 1.088 raised to the power of negative 4. So, that will be equal to 4,250,000 times this factor, which will be equal to 3,033,006 if we simplify. And then, let's go to the present value of the interest. We have 297,500 times 1 minus 1 1.088 raised to the power of negative 4 and divide it by 0.088. And we will have this. And then, if we multiply 297,500 to this factor, we will get 968,063. Now, if we add both the present value of the principal and the interest, we are going to get 4,001,069. 4, and now, we can already put it right here. And you'll realize that the trial error phase is finished. And guess what, guys? This is the perfect result for the trial and error. Because, number one, 
the two rates that you tried resulted to present values which are very near to the present value that we are looking for, which is 4 million in this case. And that's the most important thing. Okay? And number two, as you can see, one of the present values here is below 4 million. And the other one is above 4 million, which makes the 4 million the middle amount. So, if you have those two characteristics in the results of your trial and error, then I'm sure that you are already going to get the effective rate that you are looking for when you finished interpolating. So, let me repeat again. The goal of the trial and error is to get two rates that will result to present values nearest to the targeted present value of the problem. And preferably, one of the present values is higher than that of the targeted present value, and one of those present values is lower than the targeted present value. Okay? So, I will interpolate this in the next episode to keep this video short. But I am encouraging you to interpolate this on your own, to practice what you have learned, and we need to check if we have the same effective interest rate in the next episode. So that's it for this short video. So if you learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. And see you on the next one.